struggle with trauma and alienation. It is an existential crisis. The experience of war exposes the lies we tell ourselves about ourselves. It rips open the hypocrisy of our religious and secular institutions. We have learned at great personal cost something which is often incomprehensible to those who stay at home. We are not a virtuous nation. God and fate have not blessed us above others. Victory is not assured. War is neither glorious nor noble. And we carry within us the capacity for evil we ascribe to those we fight. And yet, to speak these simple truths is to engender deep hostility. These truths challenge not only the mythic narrative about war, but the mythic narrative we use to define ourselves as a people. Right. Veterans, many of whom are here today, who dare to speak these truths are condemned, ridiculed, and ignored for their courage. They struggle in a culture awash in lies, in a culture where hatred has become a patriotic virtue to speak truths few have the fortitude to hear or digest. They know that what we are taught in school, in worship, by the press, through the entertainment industry, and at home, that the melding of the state's rhetoric with the rhetoric of religion and virtue is hollow and false, and they dare to say so. We as a nation prefer to listen to those who speak from the patriotic script. We prefer to hear ourselves exalted. If veterans speak of terrible wounds, visible and invisible, of lies told to made them kill, of evil committed in our name, we plug our ears with wax. Not our boys and girls, we say, not them, bred in our homes, endowed with goodness and decency? For if it is easy for them to murder, what about us? All right. uh -huh. And so it is simpler and more comfortable not to hear. We do not listen to the angry words that cascade forth from their lips, wishing only that they would calm down, be reasonable, get some help, and go away. We, the deformed, reject our prophets, we cast them into the desert, and this is why so many veterans are estranged and enraged. This is why so many come to despair, depression, suicide, and addiction. War comes wrapped in the patriotic slogans, calls for sacrifice, honor, and heroism, and promises of glory. It comes wrapped in the claims of divine providence. It is what a grateful nation asks of its children. It is what is right and just. It is waged to make the nation and the world a better place, to cleanse evil. War is touted as the ultimate test of manhood. War from a distance seems noble. It gives us comrades and power and a chance to play a small bit in the great drama of history. It promises to give us an identity as a warrior, a patriot, as long as we go along with the myth, the one the war makers need to wage wars and the defense contractors and oil corporations need to make profits. But up close, war is a soulless void. It is organized sadism. War is barbarity, perversion, and pain, an unchecked orgy of death. Human decency and tenderness are banished. Love is reduced to crude expressions of lust or smut. Human beings are turned into objects, objects that conform to our demands or are destroyed. The noise, the stench, the fear, the eviscerated bodies and bloated corpses, the cries of the wounded, all combine to spin those in combat into another universe. In this moral void, 
naively blessed by secular and religious institutions, the hypocrisy of our social conventions, our strict adherence to moral precepts come unglued. But war, for all its horror, at least has the power to strip away the trivial and the banal, the empty chatter and foolish obsessions of a consumer society. It lets us see, although the cost is tremendous. The Reverend William P. Mahady, who was a Catholic chaplain in Vietnam, tells of a former altar boy who says to him, Hey, chaplain, how come it's a sin to hop into bed with a mama-san, but it's okay to blow away gooks out in the bush? Consider the question that he and I were forced to confront on that day in a jungle clearing, Mahady writes. How is it that a Christian can, with a clear conscience, spend a year in a war zone killing people, and yet place his soul in jeopardy by spending a few minutes with a prostitute? If the New Testament prohibitions of sexual misconduct are to be stringently interpreted. Why then are Jesus' injunctions against violence not binding in the same way? In other words, what does the commandment, Thou shalt not kill, really mean? The wars in Af Afghanistan and in Iraq, like the war in Vietnam, where the enemy is elusive and rarely seen, are wars that are primarily about murder. Yeah. 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 Families are massacred yeah. in airstrikes. Children are gunned down in yeah. blistering, suppressing fire. Artillery shells obliterate homes. Drones deliver terror from the sky. These wars are one long atrocity. And the failure of nearly all our religious institutions whose texts are unequivocal about murder, to address the essence of war has rendered them useless. Our religious institutions have little or nothing to say in wartime because the God they worship is a false God, one that promises victory to those who obey the law and believe in the manifest destiny of the nation, or one that invests in a how to is, is it with me spirituality, which in fact is an undiluted form of narcissism. There is more commitment to the sacred being expressed today in this park than will be expressed in every church, mosque, and synagogue in this city tomorrow morning. And this is why I am here. This is my church, Amen. and it is only you with whom I worship. That's right. We all have the capacity to commit evil. It takes little to unleash it. For those of us who have been to war, this is the awful knowledge that is hardest to digest. The knowledge that the line between the victims and the victimizers is razor thin. That human beings find a perverse delight in destruction and death and that few can resist the pull. At best, most of us will become silent accomplices. War empowers the worst elements of any society, those who have a penchant for violence and a lust for absolute power. War turns the moral order upside down, yes. and war has taught us that if you want to stop terrorism, you must first stop committing acts of terror. In theological terms, war is sin, and this has nothing to do, as Mahady points out, with whether a particular war is justified or whether isolated incidents in a soldier or marine's war is right or wrong. The point is that war, as a human enterprise, is a matter of sin. Yes. It is a form of hatred yes. for one's fellow human beings. Yes. Yes. It produces alienation from others and nihilism, and it ultimately represents a turning away from God. Amen. Yes. Its right. essence is death. That's right. War is always about betrayal. 
It is about betrayal of the young by yes. the old, yes. of the cynics, by idealists, yes. of soldiers and marines, by politicians. Yes. The duplicity of our institutions, including our religious institutions, which mold us into compliant citizens are unmasked by war. Yes. And this betrayal is so deep that many who return from war never find their way back to faith in the nation right. or in any god. And who can blame them? They nurse a self-destructive anger and resentment, understandable and justified, but also crippling. Ask a combat veteran struggling to piece his or her life together about God and watch the raw vitriol and pain pour out. They have seen into the corrupt heart of America. They have grasped our staggering hypocrisy. The battle being fought today is a battle between the forces of light and the forces of darkness. It is a battle between the sacred and the profane between good and evil, between those who stand up for the sanctity of life and those who deny life. And this battle, which predated our existence and will continue long after we are gone, is what defines and sustains the moral life. It is what gives us meaning and hope. It is what makes a life worth living, the sacred the religious life dwells only within those who enter the public square and fight for it. Yeah. They know that compassion and justice require confrontation. Yeah. They know that hell is truth seen too late. And they also know that to be arrested on a March day in front of the White House is an act of reverence. <laughs>